remember the blue and the green Hitachi powerhouse uprights? Well, there is now one left. The CV7750 DP Snigger is the one that remains from the two. As you know, we fully finished off the green one beyond the point of redemption by splitting the bag door right up the middle by accident. And this one wears its back chassis because it's not as faded as the original one was. You can sort of see the original there and the colour difference wear in, but it's not quite as noticeable now. Yes, let's have a look, show you how it looks now, show you how it works now, and we may even phone the hopefully long disconnected numbers that are on this sticker on the back door. Let's have a look. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? Yes, we have made a thing, we have made a thing out of two vacuum cleaners. I'm almost a little bit sad that we couldn't save the green one because it was a special edition, whereas this is just the run of the mill, top of the line, common as muck Hitachi powerhouse upright with still lots of scratches on the plastic. You can see if I pivoted at a certain angle, this is why you never use a scouring pad on any shiny plastic really, or you know, sift really hard. I mean, I use sift to clean these up after washing them, but it's only ever so lightly, because otherwise, yeah, you put scratches everywhere. And yeah, it's not too noticeable. Now I've covered it in Actually, car glaze. This has got poor boy's world black hole all over it, which does dull it down a little bit and takes your eye off of the damage, which sadly is still there. It's been machine polished and it's been glazed, and that is about as good as you can get it. This is the model with the electronic speed control, very nice, and it has now got the stair cleaning hose from the green one because why not you know and, I mean it probably is a stair cleaning hose if you've only got about six stairs unless of course there was an optional accessory hose which I just don't know exists which would have made it quite longer you have to let me know in the comments down below if you are a Hitachi upright vacuum cleaner buff this is the chassis which had the tape around the crevice tool holder but it wasn't really needed. This this has the best tools of them all, so we have the least worn crevice tool, which might be why you now don't need the tape. We have the least worn upholstery tool, although it really doesn't fit in there very well as well. It does fit in there, it doesn't clip in until you put the hose in, which then pushes it back. So probably the only real thing about this. We have the best extension tube, the one that has barely Come on, focus, barely anywhere at all on the ends, that's in there. And then, of course, we have the gappy dusting brush, because it's the only dusting brush I have for a Hitachi. That is in the same grey colour. Very nice indeed. One more thing to note is that I had to make one good cord reel out of the two as well. I can't quite remember which one was dodgy now, but one of them barely round the corner is because the the actual support mechanism was snapped inside. So I put the best flex onto the best cord reel with a little bit of a tension up. It it's okay. It's not doesn't set the world on fire, but then it does pull the plug in fully now and it sits in there. And the big part of the problem is that the table is just twisted. Storage. If I put it down, and you can see it's curling straight up, that's what causes the problem because then those curls stop it from going in properly. Not a lot you can do about that, really, short of you know using the machine daily so it doesn't just sit wrapped up like this, which is probably what this is going to do. 
hey ho, it's always going to be a problem. The other thing is, well, nothing really, the bag door is now clean and shiny. We have our pattern paper bag. You can't get heavy flow type bags for these, and it's quite difficult to bodge one in as well because of a very specific way that they go in. You're going to come out? Yeah. They are very special, fiddly. You could probably rip this off and put one of those all-for-one bags on that stick on to the cardboard collar. But, you know, we have a paper bag. We'll use that. I put the spare filters for all of the machines, wash them and put them in here. We have a clean one there and we have a clean post filter there. Very standardly basic indeed. So far, let's fit the bag back. Tuck these filters back around there so they can stay out of the way and Mr James can have them. And we shall move on to the underneath, which is pretty much the same sort of fare as the rest of the machine, really. We have the original chassis, I think, but the best wheels out of both of the machines, and these wheels have hardly anywhere on them at all. They're very good. And we had the best brush roll, which has really stiff bristles on it, which is very nice indeed. Oh, can I take this off? Yep, just about. We have our best non-scratched up. The other one was quite pitted and worn. Blockage release valve. And yeah, basically this whole machine is a bit so, really. The best bits of two machines combined into one, as we've done so many times on this channel. The only real sad part is, is that I haven't been able to keep another one of the machines because this machine had not got, I need to get this the right way around now, this one didn't have its screw that sits there. The machine that this chassis is from did and it's this screw here, every other screw on this machine is just a nice crosshead whereas this one look is some weird security bit, very shallow, very you know, very I don't know really, very, very bespoke. I've not seen one of those before. And that caused a massive pain in the bum trying to get this back spine off of the other inner core. So what I did was from the inside basically drilled, I think it's about there. And I just hacked a massive hole in it really and cut around the screw post so I can take it off and then cut the screw post off the screw from the inside, which then yeah, ruined the other back chassis. Then of course the back door wants it to split all the way up as it did in the before video. There wasn't really much coming back from that, so sadly it's RIP to that machine. And all we have left is this one. Very nice indeed. So, yeah, before we plug it up, uh, before we turn it on anyway, we have ourselves a sticker right here. You're going to focus on it and not me. Warning, this vacuum cleaner is fitted with a safety device, blah, blah, blah. For new bags, please contact. And there's a number. And um, you know me, we've done this before. I like calling random numbers. So, what have we got? We've got 01618. 492-027. Is it going to be a valid number? You've dialed an incorrect number. No! Please check the... So, whatever number that was doesn't exist. Does the other number exist? Come on, end the call. 0345-124-224. You've dialed an incorrect oh. number. So we're not going to be able to get any bags, and we can't even get the flipping thing serviced either. God, what a Swiss. I mean, I suppose it is getting on for 20 or 25 years old. It's inevitable, really, but it's always funny to phone these numbers up to see if they still exist. We've had them exist before, if you've watched my channel for long enough. So we're on our way with this machine, because it's very difficult to find bags for it. Its belt is from something else. I don't quite know what. I went through my bag of, my box of belts until I found something that fitted. And that's unfortunately how a lot of these sort of mid-90s machines have to be done with now. You have to just do what you can with what you've got. But what we have got in theory is 
A very smooth running vacuum cleaner. Now it's in low at the minute. There's all right suction. automatic speed control works well. So we'll do what everybody did when they got it out of the box and stick it in max and never touch it again and clean the carpet. Now this does have a fairly good brush roll in it. In fact no. We will turn it down so I can talk. It has a very nice stiff brush roll in it. Sadly due to the design of the cleaner it is held up off the floor somewhat, although it's actually doing its best, I can see it breathing quite well. And it's mad. Yeah, you can feel it for sure. But it's why I have always liked these Hitachi powerhouse uprights, because they do work well when they're nicely refurbished. They're simple, they clean well, they have a full set of tools. Some of them, like this one, have automatic core rewind. And I think they were pretty cheap as well back in the day. They were certainly, you know, under a hundred pounds or just about a hundred pounds. I don't really know. Comment down below if you know what these sold like. But I quite like them. This is certainly the one of about three or four that I've had so far and yeah i've liked every single one of them they are simple cheap effective bound vacuum cleaners just the cord v1 gets a little bit old and a little bit slow although this has been fettled so it's at least pulled its cable in so there we go the front says one thing cv 775 dp the back does say something completely different, like most old 1970s Ford Escorts or Land Rover Defender 90s from a certain vintage, they have been plate raped just like this one has. But it can be a little secret that its numbers don't match, its owner isn't going to care, its owner will just be happy that it's working as well as it possibly can and is cosmetically as good as it's ever going to be. So. There we go. Any comment down below? Have you had a Hitachi vacuum? And if so, what's your favourite one and why? And this can go back off to Mr James and we can move on to another project. So from me and the Hitachi Powerhouse CV775DP Snigger, I will see you soon. Bye bye.